$10 million question. What is going on? What is going on in these accounts? Is Jesus actually walking on water? H2O. In the same way that other human beings walk on the solid ground? Different answers, different opinions I hear. If you respond yes, is this then a violation of scientific laws? Did Jesus violate the physical laws of the universe? Why would he want to? Okay, but that but, but, but okay, fine. But that's beside the, that's the second that's beside the point we have right here. That's that if we go down that road we can address that and that's a perfectly legitimate question. Can he do that? That's another question. But that, we're not even at can he do that. We're at the question is he doing that? You made the distinction between water and sea. Two different things. And between our culture and the biblical culture. Were the people who wrote these stories part of a culture that was familiar with science? No. Did, did, did all the scholars understand the um, Mediterranean culture? No, very, that's the problem, is that historical critical scholars, while they have advanced us so much and we need their benefits, they're not always culturally competent. In fact, very rarely are. That's why we have, a, we have a workshop coming up called The Four Quests. We have to get to the fourth quest for the historical Jesus. The one that takes cultural anthropology and the social sciences into account. And how do we get there? Why does the, why does the church, our church, the Catholic church, I mean, we, we, have, we may have people from different you know, Christian traditions here. That's fine. They're welcome. Why among these Christian traditions does the Catholic tradition since Vatican II, and right before Vatican II, well, really after Vatican II, takes seriously cold the insights of cultural anthropology and, and the social sciences in its understanding and reading of Scripture. At least officially. At least officially. That's, that's what we say, you know? It's like we say one thing and then we do another. You know what I mean? But at least the official line is, the party line, is we're taking this seriously. Okay. In science, we Western people recognize buoyancy force. For example, when a boat goes into the water, the ship displaces so much water that it is kept up. It doesn't sink. Sure, it's heavy. But why it sinks isn't just because it's heavy. Something sinks isn't just that it sinks something anything into the water isn't just because of its weight its mass Objects will float if the gravitational downward force is less than the buoyancy upward force So in other words an object will float if it weighs less than the amount of water it displaces Boats float because the water resists the weight of the boat and the boat displaces the water. Right? <clears throat> Heavy objects with shapes like rocks sink because although they're heavy, they displace only a little bit of water. You got big rocks too, but how come they don't float? Yeah, because compared to their weight, their shape does not displace that much water. A boat does, the way it's designed. For any, now let's talk about human shapes, Joe. For any person to stand on a depth of water, say like the average depth of the Sea of Galilee, their total body weight divided by eight pounds will tell you how many gallons of water his or her feet would have to displace. 
So a 160 pound man would have to displace 20 gallons of water with each step. Is that what Jesus is doing? Is the text describing him displacing every step 20 gallons of water? And carefully modifying that as he gets to the shallow area? <laughs> You know, folks, you cannot know what the Bible means until you realize what the Bible meant. That includes for homilists, by the way. Just saying. You cannot know what the Bible means until you realize what the Bible meant. One difficulty we 21st century Western people have is that according to our cultural consensus reality, there exists laws of nature, and that is why we have a good post-enlightenment definition of miracle as something contrary to the physical laws of the universe, contrary to the laws of nature. I want you to watch this. Indeed, there is no Greek or Hebrew word in the Bible that can be translated into our modern word, miracle. That is to say, something contrary to the physical laws of the universe. Something like the buoyancy force. Something contrary to the laws of nature. Science laws of nature and violations to the laws of nature are simply not part of their consensus reality mediterranean cultural consensus reality ancient israelite cultural consensus reality they could never have thought of stories like this as a miracle a violation of the physical laws of the universe I want you to think about triangles for a moment. Can you do that for me? Consider for a moment a triangle. Not just the image of a triangle, the concept of a triangle. And it's different, right? You have an image of a triangle, you imagine a triangle. That's image of a triangle. But then you can know what a triangle is, don't you? Without having necessarily being slavish to a conception, to a imagined image. So we're talking about, that's the difference between the concept of a triangle and the image of a triangle. Okay, bear with me. The concept triangle. In order to be able to conceive of triangle, you must first be able to conceive the concept angle. True or false? <laughs> Even if you arrive at both these concepts simultaneously, angle and triangle, angle must logically be first. Right? Even if it's not temporally first. Even if it's simultaneous angle with triangle, you must first logically come to the concept of angle logically, not temporally necessarily, before you come to triangle. In the same way, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot conceive of miracle, a violation of the cosmic laws, physical laws of the universe, unless you logically first conceive of physical laws of the universe. If therefore you have no concept of physical laws of the universe, you can't conceive of miracle. It's just that simple. It's absurd to, to think otherwise. It's impossible to think otherwise. Once you lay it, get it laid out like that, right? Very good. Let's clear all that baggage away.
culture shapes what you can perceive, what you can understand, what you can interpret, and what you can communicate. If miracle means a violation of the physical laws of the universe, you have to, to be able to use that word miracle, you have to belong to a culture that perceives, interprets, understands, and communicates physical laws of the universe, governing the universe. If you went back in time 2,000 years and tried to describe the word miracle to somebody there, they can't, you, couldn't, you wouldn't be able you're to. You're talking gibberish. Words. You're talking. It's like trying to describe blue to the himba. So in the Bible, should the word miracle ever be in your English Bible translation? No. Ah, thank God there is no word miracle in the Bible. There's a word for wonders, mighty deeds, marvels, acts of power, works, and signs. Ta'erga and John, works, and semion, signs. Ta'semia, that's fine. Do you all understand? Different works in the Old Testament speak of marvels or marvelous things. But we should never translate the Hebrew word into our miracle. Consider a 21st century Israeli mom delighted at her collegian daughter's fine grades at university. By exclaiming the Hebrew for marvelous, she is not declaring what a violation of the laws of nature she, my daughter overrided the physical laws of the universe. My dumbest dirt daughter did an absurdity. Rather, she is saying, marvelous. My very capable daughter studied hard and prepared well. Right? Okay. Marvels and wonders. This is how God's deeds are described in the Hebrew Bible. Not violations of physical laws of the universe. And this is how Jesus' deeds are described in the New Testament. The Synoptic Gospels, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, say Jesus did dunamis, mighty deeds. That's where we get the word dynamite from. The fourth Gospel, John, says Jesus did signs, semea, and works, ta'erga. Erga, like energa, energy. There you go, which is in the work, right? Or the ability to work. But we're not talking about science. There are no miracles in the Bible. If by miracles we mean post-enlightenment violations of physical laws of the universe or the laws of nature. Do you think people in the church need to hear this? What do you think? Yes. Think about this in light of Jesus walking on the sea. He's not walking on H2O. He's not walking on chemical water, is he? He's walking on an other than human person, a, less, a lesser God. That he's human and able to do that means somehow he has authorization from a more powerful deity. Hey, thanks for watching. Just continue the playlist for the next part of the study. If you have further questions, this is good. They will get addressed, so keep watching. If you found value, please subscribe, like, and share. As always, Questions, comments, and criticisms are most welcome. God bless you.